Hi, this is Mary from Open Helix with this week's Tip of the Week. If you're seeing this tip someplace else, be sure to swing back by our blog at blog.openhelix.com for additional details. I'll provide links to the resources I'm talking about today, links to the publications, and so on. So check us out at blog.openhelix.com. Today I wanted to highlight the importance of community genome browsers. Because we're seeing more and more sequence data coming out in the next generation sequencing era that we find ourselves in, there's a lot of new and important biology that can be explored in these organisms. Beyond the sequence data itself, we're learning more about evolutionary relationships, interesting biology, and, and more. And here's a case of that. There was a publication in Nature on a butterfly genome recently. And so in this particular um, Hel Heliconius um, genome sequence data, they were able to learn about new relationships that were important to this species. It's um, a species from Central and South America, and they were able to access some really interesting stuff. But in addition to the publication that we've got here, we need to know more about this because these traditional publication formats can provide us some interesting biology and some compelling examples, uh, but the access to the actual sequence data is also crucial as well. If you want to explore it further, you want to um, compare to your species of interest and more, you're going to need access to that information. And generally these groups are now providing a community genome browser. And in this case, here's the example of the Postman Butterfly Genome Project Browser. So it's the, there's this, this is the species we were talking about in the Nature paper here. And they provide you access to um, sequencing um, information. You can uh, download the whole sequence, or you can perform sequence searches here at their site where you can browse around the genome. And the other thing that's great about these community genome browser sites is they often link to the lab that's performed this work. So here you could go to the Read Lab and learn, learn more. Uh, about their work, and you might find that there's additional details that are important for you, um, things that um, are coming out. So there's transcriptome data coming out soon that may appear on their genome browser before it appears in some of these super browsers, um, and so it's important to access that kind of information as well. So the community genome browsers are a really important resource. Now I'm going to show you the, the example of the genome browser that they've created here, but you can access other tools that are available over here too. So here we're loading up the installation that they've got of the GBrowse. So this is the generic genome browser, GBrowse here, that's part of the GMod project. And so they've created a browser that you can use. So you could click on a gene here and you could learn more about this gene. You could um, load up your own data as well. You could um, add community tracks. Um, and so in this case you can go over and look at the tracks that are available and there's a limited set of tracks that are available. But over time this can grow because that lab may be adding new data. And that data might be available here before it becomes available in some of the super browsers. So it's really key to access these community genome browsers and explore those. Another example of this, the Monarch genome uh, was published prior to this. And um, they also created a community browsing site as well. So here's Monarch Base. And again, you can perform sequence searches. You can download all kinds of um, useful information. You could look at um, different aspects of the biology that they found interesting as well. And there's also an opportunity here to browse their genome. So if you click the link here for Browse Genome, you can look around at their installation of GBrowse. You could search here in various ways, but I'm going to go just directly to this Browse the Latest Genome Assembly link here and show you their installation of GBrowse. So again, they've created a site where you could browse around, you could learn more about the genes of interest, so you could click on this gene and you could learn more about this gene. You can add up different tracks. In this case, there are, are additional tracks that are available that might be useful for you. I'll go back to the browser here. So it's really important to access these data sets that accompany these papers and learn how to interact with their software and visit these community sites for more. Now, these genomes also end up in some of the big browsers. For example, um, just recently, Ensemble Metazoa has included both of these genomes. So in, um, in the July release that they had here, um, it included both this um, monarch and this postman butterfly genome. And that's great too because they have additional tools that might be useful for you. I'm going to click on that uh, Heliconius uh, genome just to show you their, their example so you can learn more from this landing page. It will link you to um, the, the sources of information and so on. But you also have access here to the, um, to, to the tools that are available from Ensemble. So I'll just click this gene sample entry point to show you that. But from here you could learn about the gene, you can get transcript information, you can get um, assembly information, and you can access other tools um, around the ensemble resources as well. For example, you could perform um, detailed and custom queries from the ensemble Metazoa Biomart installation here. So it's important to know that not only are the um, publications available for you, but the genome browsers are now available and it's key to access the details that are available for you uh, from these genome browsing sites, the community ones and the big genome browsers as well. So check those out. Thanks very much for your time.